Welcome back to the South African Morning. As we head up to nine minutes away from seven o'clock, if you're watching the time, civil servants are set to embark on a strike. You're probably wondering, well, isn't there another strike? Yes, that's the Transnet strike. This is PSA. They say uh, they could plan to protest as early as next week. This comes off the back of unions rejecting government's 3% wage increase offer. So let's find out where we stand on all of this. PSA spokesperson Claude Nyker joining us this morning here on the SA Morning. Claude, good to have you on the show. Appreciate uh, the time. There's quite a lot to go through. We're going to talk about where we stand as far as strike action is concerned. But first of all, let's just go back to the wage negotiations. Uh, public sector unions demanding an 8% increase, uh, government coming back with 3 and government saying that's generous. Some would say it was insulting. Where does PSA stand on that? It's a very good morning to you, Garrett. Yes, certainly insulting. Um, just to correct, it, uh, our initial demand was 10%, and we seem to be far off from where the government's offer was, and we lowered our demand to 6%. Currently, the government stands at 3% on the table in the draft revised agreement. Uh, coupled with that is a cash gratuity that they were entitled to from last year, and that continued this year. So basically what is on the table is a 3% pensionable salary offer and a cash gratuity ranging between 1,200 and 1,600. Now in the draft agreement, it contains a clause which indicates that that cash gratuity will cease at the end of 31st of March come 2023. Mm. We're not happy with that. We feel that um, you will recall in 2020, public servants did not receive their salary increase at all. And as a compromise in 2021, we signed an agreement where employees will receive that cash gratuity. Now, if that cash gratuity ceases at the end of March 31st, uh, I think public servants will be worse off. They will be left with no money in their pocket and will be in dire financial need. So that is one of the public problematic areas in the draft agreement. Um, like you quite uh, rightly pointed out, one of the requirements before we go on strike action is to agree on picketing rules. Mm. We have started the process. We hope to finalize the process by Monday. And once that is done, uh, then we will have to give notice to the employer. It's a seven day notice and then we will embark on industrial action. Uh, we'll get to what the impact of the industrial action will be because it's over 230,000 uh, PSA members. We'll talk about impact in a moment, Claude. Uh, talk to me about the critics, and I'm sure this is not news to you, uh, as I'm sure you've been involved for many, many years now. Some are suggesting you're holding a failing economy hostage. What do you say to that sort of critique? Yeah, that seems to become a cliched statement now, and it's been uh, mooted quite some time every time we engage with the media and obviously some of the members, uh, some analysts itself. I think, as I pointed out, you recall that during COVID, public servants were at the forefront of service delivery. Uh, they were working while most of us were at home during that time. Um, during that period, they sacrificed a lot. A lot of our members passed on during that period servicing the public and during the entire financial year they did not get a salary increase so, so that set us back quite some time if you look at escom state-owned entity they managed to get a seven percent increase and despite um uh, not progressing or not um uh, you know progressing over these years they a state-owned entity that government subsidizes on a regular basis they managed to get a seven percent increase while all we are asking at this stage or what is on the table is 6% and they're offering 3%. So I don't think it's fair to say that, listen, we're holding the economy to ransom. Uh, the current inflation rate is hovering around 7.4%. Uh, we're far off from that. Mm. I think 3% might be a compromise for public servants, although reluctantly we might agree on the 3%. We're certainly not happy with the 3%. But as I said, the elephant in the room is the protection of the cash gratuity. If that continues beyond 31st of March, mm. it's something that we can we can sell to our members and say, listen, this is the best that we can do at this stage. It's a but certainly they are not happy with the 3%. Uh, I'm, I'm quite sure they're not. Just as uh, in conclusion, Claude, before I say goodbye to you briefly, if this were to go to a full-blown strike, just paint a picture how damaging this could be for those sectors that, require, that rely on PSA, public uh, service association workers. What's the kind of damage we're looking at? Not economically, just from a day-to-day -day, uh, getting work done perspective. Quite right, yeah. I, I think it's not, firstly, I just must mention very quickly that 
strike action is the last resort for any organization. At the moment, you're looking at Department of Home Affairs, Department of Water and Sanitation, Department of Employment and Labor, certain aspects of the police, the entire education sector, and Department of Forestry and Fisheries, Department of Economic Affairs, Department of Agriculture. We have members throughout the public sector in all sectors, um, so definitely it will have an impact on the public service come next week. And, and just very briefly, sorry, give me the date where the cutoff is on this before I let you go. Well, uh, as I said, one of the conditions to go on strike action is that we got to agree on the picketing rules, how we manage picket. That might be concluded by the latest by Monday. Once that is done, then we will give seven days notice to the employer. Once the seven days notice have expired, then we will embark on industrial action. Well, I appreciate your time, uh, Claude Nyker. I'm sure that you and I are going to speak again uh, in the coming weeks. So we'll keep an eye on the story as well. I appreciate his time this morning. Uh, the PSA spokesperson, Claude Nyker. Uh,